is too weak, what do we need to do? So who can draw on the graph? Who knows how to do that? We did in the last class, so it's a review. Currency is too weak. Hmm? Currency is too weak, what do we need to do? Increase demand. So who said increase demand? Hand up. And you can draw on the graph. It's easy, right? So increasing demand on the graph. Okay. So we increase demand, what happens to the price? price up. Goes up. What does the government do in order to increase demand? Why it's currency using what? What does it use to buy its currency? It needs to give people something. If it's going to buy its own currency, it needs to pay, give something for its own currency. If I, I'm the central bank and I want to buy my own currency, what do I need to use to buy my own currency? No. Hmm? What did you say? Gold. I can use gold to buy my own currency in the market. Right? So you have my currency. I'm buying my currency in the market. You own my currency. You have my bond. Right? So I want to buy my bonds to increase demand. But I can't buy my currency with my own currency. Right? I need something to give you something to buy my currency with, right? So I'm going to sell my gold and buy my currency. I'm going to sell my, my foreign currencies and sell my buy my currency. Okay, so what's your name? Yo Ganso. Yo Okay, so who can show me the other one? Currency is too strong, what needs to be done? You can draw on the graph. Somebody else. Okay, what you got? Your big moment. Don't mess it up. Are you nervous? Okay, so good. So what did you do? What's that? What's happening? That's correct. What did you do now? Can you explain? Currency is too strong stronger. Yes. If um if currency is too stronger, we should depreciate our currency. Yes. How do we depreciate so our currency? To increase money supply. Uh, money su Increasing our supply, right? Supply. Yeah. So practically, how are we going to do that? Practically, how are we going to increase the supply of our currency? Uh, decrease interest rate. Decrease, decrease the interest rate and? And? So. 
selling by their own currency. Selling their own currency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Right on. Uh, the last time, we said that we are going to look at the document in this class. Uh, did you read the document at home? Hmm? Exchange rate models? I'm oh, not exchange rate models, sorry. Uh, exchange rate regimes. Yeah. All right. The week time. So then, let's go through the document now. Yes. So this kind of document can help us to understand more clearly. Give some examples. Okay. It's an, this is a, note, a teaching note. So it's about four pages long. And some other graphs. Right. Well, first it defines exchange rate. We said exchange rate is the price of one currency in terms of another currency. So in Argentina. Pesos in the US dollars. Okay? As with houses, the price of a currency is affected by supply and demand. Do you understand the housing market? Okay, we have a lot of supply of houses. Right? Then what should happen to the house price? We have a lot of supply of houses and not many people in the countryside in Gangwondo. What should happen to the price? What about in the middle of Seoul? We have a high demand and a lot of people, but not many houses. Price goes up. Okay, that's the normal situation. Supply and demand demands decides the price. But one problem is the government can get involved in the market. Right? They can intervene. How can the government intervene in the housing market? They can make some regulations. Okay? Or the government can buy the houses in Gangwondo. The government could buy all the houses in Gangwondo to put up the price. Okay? So we can have some problem in the market sometimes. As we have more demand for currency, the price goes up. Okay, this is called appreciation or getting stronger. As this demand decreases or supply increases, the value is going to depreciate. So, for example, in Argentina, with the exchange rate or the dollar has gone up, people mean the peso has depreciated. More pesos are required to buy a dollar. So we should, if we have one dollar, and we have one dollar is equals to one peso, okay? Then we have one dollar is equals to four pesos. What happened? The peso scale. The peso what? What vocabulary, other vocabulary can we use? Get weaker? Depreciate. Depreciate. Yeah. Okay? Go down in value. Okay? Dollar is? Appreciate. Appreciate. Other vocabulary? Get stronger. Get stronger. Yeah. Go up in value. Does that make sense? The I can now get more, if I go, I get more pesos for my dollar. So my dollar has more value. It's stronger. Okay? Appreciate and depreciate. So, we said the foreign exchange market is the biggest market in the world with more than $4 trillion traded every day. That's a lot of money. Okay? So, it can change quickly. Okay? The price of the currencies can change quickly. People use the foreign exchange market to buy goods and services, to invest in assets, or simply to speculate. Speculators is, is one of the biggest ones in the market. Do you understand speculation? Yes. What does speculation mean? What does a real estate speculator do? They buy and sell houses, but what, what's their idea? Are they going to live in the house? No, they, they buy at a cheap price. They buy the house at a cheap price and then what? Sell at the high price. Sell at the high price. Okay, that's a real estate speculator. What about a currency speculator? They buy the currency at the low price and sell the currency at the high price. Okay? It's the same. Who needs to wait longer to get their profit? The real estate speculator or the currency speculator? The real estate speculator needs to wait for a long time. Okay? So that market is not as liquid. Liquidity means like water is a liquid, moving very easily and freely. 
Okay, so the currency market is very liquid. I can buy a currency today, maybe next week I can make a profit of 2 or 3 or 5%. Okay? Or I can also make a loss. So here we have the exchange rate. Argentina had a crisis in uh, 2001. We talked about the Thai crisis. Okay? Similar to the Thailand crisis, it was paid to the US dollar at 1 to 1. Very easy. 1 to 1. Right? For years it was pegged. But Argentina came under a lot of pressure. Its economy was doing very badly. It had high unemployment. Exports were not competitive. Okay? So it decided to leave the peg. Okay? So quite similar these days to Greece and Germany. The US was Germany and Greece was Argentina. Okay? So if Greece left the euro, it might be end up like Argentina after Argentina left the peso. I've left the, with the dollar. So it was one to one in December. What happened just one month after it's free floating? What happened? One dollar is now 2.5 pesos. What happened? The peso got stronger or weaker? Weaker. weaker. Then we can see here by May it's up to four. So three or four hundred percent difference. Okay? So a big uh, change, and then just down here at three, right? Nowadays it's, it's uh, floating against the dollar. <clears throat> so this can make a big problem for businesses. This very rapid, do you understand rapid, very quick change in the exchange rate is risk. It's a risk for businesses, okay? So for example, we need some input for our production process. Okay? So let's say that I need some special mi mineral to make the screen for the smartphone. The mineral is only available in China. Okay? So if the Chinese RMB suddenly gets stronger by 50%, the price of my input gets more expensive by 50%. Okay? So then my profit is going to be reduced. So we can do hedging. Hedging, uh, we study more in the other class, in the financial, international financial management. Hedging means we make a bet on the opposite side. Okay? So uh, I think I, the Chinese RMB will get 50% stronger, maybe. So I'm going to get, make a contract to buy the Chinese RMB. So I'm going to lose money on my buying my products, but I'm going to gain money on my bet the Chinese RMB will get stronger. So <clears throat> the exchange rate can also affect the economy. When the currency depreciates, our goods become cheaper and foreign goods become more expensive. Okay? Uh, if we are going to have inflation. Why? Our imports, one reason is our imports is going to be more expensive, right? Oil, if I'm buying oil in Argentina, it costs $50 for one barrel. Here it costs 50 pesos, right? Now how much does oil cost? 200 pesos, okay? So price of oil is involved in a lot of things. So if I'm driving to work, I now have to pay four times the price. Am I going to ask my boss for a higher salary? Or not? I have to pay four times the price for gas. Right? How much does gas cost in Korea? You don't know, right? Chon <laughs> Obe won for one liter. Imagine tomorrow the price is Yuk Chon won for one liter. Right? Suddenly changed like that. So people demand higher wages, and this can lead to price increases. And uh, we can have a wage price spiral. Wage price spiral, I ask for higher wages, the prices go up more. I ask for higher wages, the prices go up more. Do you understand spiral? Yes. So this is a spiral. It keeps going up. Okay? So the farm, some trader can make a bet that the currency will get weaker and weaker. They can also force the currency to get weaker. We'll talk about that in, Christ, in, uh, in the currency crisis later. 
So then let's look at each regime. First one is floating. Floating regime. So the US, the UK, Japan, the Euro, compared to the other currencies. Okay? Exchange rate determined by market forces. We can divide into long and short term factors. We'll talk about later what affects the exchange rate. Um, more briefly than the other class. Uh, we have the theory of purchasing power parity. So who is studying the international financial management class? So can you tell us what is the theory of PPP? <laughs> Yes, what is the Big Mac index? So, yeah, so what is the PPP exchange rate then? Yes. So here we can see, are most currencies undervalued or overvalued against the dollar? Undervalued, right? So this is the Big Mac index. Okay. According to the PPP, the Big Mac should be the same price in every country. Okay. If the exchange rate was correct, then the Big Mac would be the same in every country, or rice, or anything. Right? Because simply, if, if rice costs much more in one country, some trader is going to take the rice from this country and start selling in the other country. And the price should find the equilibrium, balance out. Okay? But in the real life, we don't have that. Why not? Why doesn't PPP exist in the real life? Why isn't the Big Mac the same price in every country? Why isn't rice the same price in every country? Because there are some regulations. For regulations. Any other reason? Because the Tariffs. Transportation costs. If we don't make rice in Ireland, we have to transport the rice from here. Okay? So we have different labor costs. People have different cultures, different preferences. Okay? So we don't have that in the real life. But PPP is saying the exchange rate should be based on the different uh, difference in the in the goods, right? So we look at if gold costs one dollar in the U.S. and two pounds in the U.K., the exchange rate should be one dollar is two pounds. Okay. So we can see here a lot of currencies are undervalued against the dollar at the moment. Only Switzerland, Norway. Sweden and Denmark are overvalued. So one of this means is don't go on holidays to Switzerland. <laughs> one summer my mother-in-law wanted to see the Alps, so I decided to go to Slovenia. The Alps are in Slovenia. Slovenia uses the Euro, not the Swiss franc. Slovenia is much cheaper than Switzerland. Don't tell my mother-in-law. <laughs> Right? With my wife. But it's still very nice. Okay? They have the mountains there. <coughs> uh, Norway is a nice place to go, but very expensive. So we, we can go to Russia on holidays. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are things cheap in Russia at the moment? Cheaper than here. How much does it cost to buy a Big Mac? Just w less than $2 yeah. in Russia? Yeah. You like McDonald's? Yeah. You can go to Vladivostok <laughs> on the boat for the holiday time in the winter, right? Just spend every day in McDonald's eating Big Macs for two dollars. How much does the Big Mac cost in South Korea? Cost four dollars. Nearly double the price as Russia. Okay? So, you can, I'm sure it's the similar for hotels or that kind of thing, right? Can you take the ferry to Vladivostok? Yes? Do you know about the ferry to Vladivostok? Yes? Mm, ferry, you understand ferry? From, from here to Vladivostok here? Is that correct? 
you're students, right? You could fly to Vladivostok. Or you can take the bus and take the ferry to save some money, right? In the winter time. Or you can visit that, their house. Right? So Too far away. How much does it cost to fly there? This is the law of one price, which says that in competitive markets, identical goods should sell for the same price across different margins. Okay? So, for example, if steel costs less in Germany than Japan, excess demand would push the German prices higher, and excess supply of Japanese steel would put Japanese lower, and it would reach equilibrium. So this is called a uh, real exchange, exchange rate. So we just looked at this, The Economist. This is not official figures. It's a light-hearted interpretation of PPP, McDonald's Big Mac. Do you understand light-hearted? Just for fun, OK? Uh, Starbucks also has, how much does a latte cost? OK? Uh, we can see in the exhibit, how much does a latte cost in Korea? Uh, Six thousand. Six thousand. I don't know. Starbucks. Almost five. So here we have the, the Starbucks index, right? And we can see a little bit different than the McDonald's index. South Korea, Starbucks is more expensive than the other countries. Uh, so we compa compare those kind of things across countries, and that gives us an idea uh, about the exchange rate. Okay, Korea's real exchange rate should be, according to the OECD, 901 to $1. That would be the exchange rate at which prices are the same in the US and in Korea. But it's not. It's $1 is equal to 1,101. Okay? Is Korea's currency overvalued or undervalued? Undervalued. Undervalued. Okay? So Korea wants to promote its exports. One reason why it's undervalued against the US dollar. Another reason is we might have lower labor costs in Korea. Okay? Uh, why do goods cost more in the US? Maybe transport costs. Korea is very close to China, so we can get a lot of goods from China easily, right? So, there's a number of reasons. So, we're not interested in that Korea is now undervalued against the US dollar, as in predicting the future exchange rate. We just want to understand this, right? Later we'll talk about uh, forecasting the exchange rate. So, so PPP is a useful framework. Do you understand framework? Yes. It's a way to think about exchange rates. But its predictive power in the short term is weak. Okay? For the sh uh, shorter term, we use the interest parity. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, interest parity later, so I'm just going to skip over that now. Okay. We'll talk about it in more detail later. So the next one is managed float. Managed float. The central bank openly influences the movement of the exchange rate through active intervention in the foreign exchange market. Okay. So we said the government intervenes. So fixed exchange rate then Managed, we won't say much about it because it's, in a way, it's similar to the fixed exchange rate, right? So, fixed exchange rate, the, the government is keeping the, managing the currency at the same, always the same price. So, let's look at this story. There is a small country called Aruba, 
It pays its florin to the US dollar, 179 florin per dollar. The Aruban Central Bank always has to buy florin with dollars or buy dollars with florin at this amount. Okay? It's like, for them, the dollar is like gold. It used to be in the old days, all currencies was backed by gold. So when I went into the bank with five dollars, the bank had to give me gold. Okay? So the banks used to have a lot of gold in the bank. So I would go in with my paper money, and actually it says on the, it used to say on the money, pay the bearer of this paper this much in gold, right? So I give you the paper, and you give me the gold. Okay? That was the gold standard. But that's finished now. Okay? No, we don't have any more. You can't go to the bank and say, give me gold. Where's my gold? Right? I'm giving you the money, give me the gold. Right? They'll just laugh at you. But you can go to the bank and say, give me US dollars. They'll give you US dollars. Okay? So these guys, they're promising to always, if you give them dollars, they're always going to give you 1.79 florin. Okay? Or if you go and give them florin, they're always going to give you dollars. So in order to trust them, they have to have enough dollars, right? If they don't have enough dollars, I don't trust them that I can go to the bank with my florin and they'll give me dollars. So that's the problem in the crisis. They, they run out of dollars, right? So uh, they are buying and selling dollars and florin to keep this price stable. Okay? So they meet excess demand by increasing the supply of the florin. If, two, if, if there's a lot of demand, we saw over here, increase supply. Okay? If there is a lot of supply, then they increase demand. Okay? So the exchange rate doesn't change, but the dollar reserves of the central bank change, because they're doing something. They're increasing the supply, or they're increasing the demand. So in order to increase the supply or demand, they're using their reserves. Okay? Which do you think is easier? Increase demand or increase supply? Increase supply, right? Just press go on the printer. <laughs> oh, there's more money. Okay? But to increase demand, we need the hard currency, the foreign currency, to buy the currency. Okay? So, <clears throat> the same situation we, we can think about for interest rates. Do you think that it's possible, in Hong, we said the Hong Kong dollar is fixed to the US dollar? always the same, right? Do you think it's possible that in Hong Kong they have a 5% interest and in the US they have 1% interest? Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Why not? Because Hong Kong they dollar will, tends to be a US dollar. They will take loans from the US. Uh, everybody will take, everybody in the world. Yes. Right? They'll take loans from the US and deposit in Hong Kong. Okay? So they have to have the same exchange rate, interest rate, if they're fixed. So we don't have that situation, okay? So, uh, if we see here that the, in, the florin interest rate must equal the dollar interest rate, okay? So if the exchange rate is credibly fixed, there is no expected appreciation or depreciation, the interest rate on florin deposits must be the same as dollar deposits. Okay? So, if we have more tourism in Aruba, it's an island, tourist island, right? What's going to happen? We are going to have more demand for florin. If you go there on holidays, you need florin to spend. So, we're going to increase demand for florin. Okay? Then, we're going to increase the interest rate. If the confidence in the fixed exchange rate holds, then a higher florin interest rate will attract investors who will offer dollars and demand florins. So can we see the problem here? Okay. There's more demand for the florin because of the tourism. So the interest rate is going up. Okay. Then the interest rate attracts more investors who want more florin because it has a higher interest rate than the US. So the central bank has to do something. It has to intervene. Okay? It increases the florin 
Okay? So, all the, because a lot of tourists are going to Aruba this year, high demand for the florin, to keep the exchange rate stable, the central bank needs to increase the supply. Okay? Supply more florin. Uh, problem. No problem. Right? Is there a problem here? No, right? This is where we can have the problem. Suppose that we have a hurricane. Do you understand hurricane? Yes. In Aruba. Uh, what's going to happen? Are you going to go there on holidays? No. No. So the demand for the florin decreases. Okay? So the traders might decide that also to sell the florin. Okay? It's going to start depreciation. Depreciating. So the Aruban Central Bank can increase the interest rate on the florin to try and create more demand. Okay? Or they can have to uh, sell their foreign exchange reserves. Okay? But what's the problem that we didn't have here? Is the supply of my currency limited or unlimited? Limited. Limited? There's only so much paper and ink in the world? Practically, it's unlimited, right? You could say we could run out of paper and ink, right? What about this one? Are our foreign reserves limited or unlimited? Limited. Limited. So when the reserves run out, what can the central bank do now? Can it do anything? No, it's like Thailand, right? They run out of their foreign reserves. There's nothing they can do. They have to change the regime to a floating regime, okay? Just like Argentina and Thailand. Okay, so this is the crisis situation that we can have in the fixed regime. So we can see that it's important to have a lot of reserves if we want to have a fixed regime. Okay? So, uh, the we have a debate. Which is better, fixed or floating? Okay? So we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of the regimes. So, and you, I should be able to ask you later, and you should be able to tell me clearly what's the advantage of the floating regime, right? What's the disadvantage? What's the advantage? The disadvantages. Okay. So let's start with the heading of trade. Okay. Which one is better for trade? Do you think? Why? That's correct. Why? Not as much risk, right? If we have a fixed exchange rate, trade can run more smoothly. If it's, if it's a floating exchange rate, it's up and down and it's harder for traders. They have to pay money for insurance to hedge the exchange rate risk. Okay? So that's why they had the gold standard before. In the past, the world had the gold standard. The reason was the Greeks. Do you know the Greeks, Alexander? Alexander found that out. He was the first person to make a world empire, and he used the same currency all over his empire. Okay? So Alexander went from India in the east across to Portugal in the west. Right? Massive empire. Before that, they were using barter, all different kinds of money, but Alexander got a lot of gold and silver when he captured the cities, so he melted all the gold and silver, put his face on the coin, and made, made the one currency for the empire. What do you think happened to trade? Increased or decreased? Increased a lot, increased exponentially, right? When Alexander made this kind of currency for all of the empire, the trade increased a lot, okay? So the Romans also used system, right? In the Roman Empire, we had the Roman currency, the trade was increased, so if we are all using the same currency, the same value, we can trust each other, okay? We, we know the value of the money, okay? So they use the gold standard, but you might ask, why did the gold standard fail, right? That's going to be, we'll talk about, that's the weakness of the fixed exchange rate system, is that some countries are more productive and competitive than other countries. So. If my country is more productive and competitive than your country, and the exchange rate is always the same, then I'm trapped in this exchange rate, right? So be 
Basically, Great Britain was the reason the gold standard fell apart. Usually, Great, Great Britain also dropped out of the euro. So the UK liked to do their own thing, right? Some people will say that's a negative. Some people will say it's positive. But in the UK, they, they, they like to make up their mind. They like to change things quickly. There's no way that the UK would be in the situation Greece is in now. They would have left the euro currency a long time ago, right? They already left the, U the euro currency in 1992, okay? So the UK was the first country to leave the gold standard. Why do you think the UK left the gold standard? The same problem Greece has these days. They had too high unemployment. Unemployment was about 25 or 30 percent, very high, okay? So the people was having demonstrations. They want jobs, okay? But the UK industry is not competitive. It's not competing well. Nobody is buying the UK products, okay? So the UK taught very simple thinking. Let's leave the gold standard, make our products a lot cheaper. People will start buying our products and we'll have more employment, okay? Great idea by the UK, right? But then what happened next? What do you think happened next? Do you think all the other countries like, said, oh, look, the UK made their currency weaker. And now their unemployment is getting much better. Their economy is improving. Oh, but, but we're not selling our products. What do you think they said? Stay in the gold standard or leave the gold standard too? They left the gold standard too. France left the gold standard, right? Next, Germany left the gold standard. Caused the hyperinflation in Germany. Who came to power because of hyperinflation in Germany? Hitler, yes. So some people say it's the cause of the world war. All the UK's fault. Do you agree? Hmm? No? But you can see the economic problem and the war problem is often linked together, right? So we are beginning to understand by the story of the gold standard, weakness of the fixed exchange rate system. Okay? It's not easy to stay in the fixed exchange rate system. So but it does help trade. It's, it, it, uh, trade can increase under the fixed exchange rate because we don't have the risk. <clears throat> so then we have uh, risk of a destabilizing speculative attack. So which one has a higher risk of a destabilizing speculative attack? Fixed exchange rate or floating exchange rate? The floating exchange rate is already in the market, being bought and sold every day. Speculators are already trading the currency every day. So which one is, has more risk of, of an attack, a concentrated attack by speculators? It's fixed, right? Who is the speculators taking the money from? In the, in the fixed exchange rate. If the speculators are winning, who's losing? Country. Country, they're foreign reserves, right? Speculators is selling their currency. The country is buying their currency, right? In the end, the foreign reserves are going to the speculators. So this is how it works. I'm a speculator, okay? I think that Argentina is going to is going to leave right leave the fixed exchange rate regime so what am I going to do I think next year Argentina will leave the fixed exchange rate system and it's going to get much weaker I think right peso will get weaker so what am I going to do buy the peso Buy as much peso as I can? Sell. Buy all the property in Argentina? Hmm? Sell. sell. I'm going to sell the peso, but where am I going to get the peso to sell it? I have to buy it. Am I going to buy it and sell it? Then that cancels each other out. So what am I going to do? Get a loan, right? So I'm going to get a loan of peso. And then after I get a loan, what am I going to do? Keep it in my bank? Keep the pesos in my bank? No. Sell it. For what? What am I going to buy? No. Hmm? Bananas? <laughs> Put all the bananas in a big warehouse? 
<laughs> let them go bad? No? What am I going to buy with my pesos? Bicycles? Dollars. I can buy whatever I want, because when I change it back, I'll get a higher price. But the foreign exchange market is very liquid, so I think I'll buy dollars, right? So let's say that I, let's make a very simple example, because it doesn't matter where it's meant. 100, I have 100 pesos, get a loan of 100 pesos, how many dollars am I going to get? One to one exchange rate. One to one. Very good. Right. Then next year, ex leaves the ex Argentina leaves the exchange rate. The exchange rate changes. One dollar is four pesos. What am I going to do now? Dollars for pesos. How many pesos will I get for my one hundred dollars? Four hundred pesos. Okay. I'm going to go into the bank. Will I be singing a song when I'm going in the door? <laughs> Hmm? Maybe, I'll be whistling. <laughs> right? How many pesos do I have now? 400. How much do I need to give back to the banker? 100 pesos. How many can I keep for myself? 300. Okay. So profit is 300 pesos. Okay. Can you, do you understand that transaction? Yes. Do you want to do that? Hmm? Do you want to do that? If you knew that, if you were, after four years, you, you can see some country has a problem, like Argentina, you studied international financial theory, you think they're going to leave the fixed exchange rate, are you going to do this? Hmm? Yes? Do you think the speculators are bad people, or they're just, just uh, following nature? Smart? Hmm? Following nature? Like in the jungle. <laughs> hmm? So there's some weak animal in the jungle. So we take down the weak animal, eliminate the weak animal. So some people in the UK, the speculators were doing this in the UK. The most famous one was Soros in 1992. Some people wanted to make a statue of, of Soros. Okay, after why? Because when Britain left, the forerunner of the euro, their economy improved a lot. Their unemployment went down and they increased their exports. So some people said the speculators did a favor for the British economy. Okay? Because the speculator forced Britain out of the fixed exchange rate with Germany, okay, uh, then Britain's economy improved. So speculators might even say we're doing a good thing. We're helping the economy. Right? They can make that argument. <coughs> And we're making a profit. Okay? But of course, other people have negative other opinions. They would say, no, the speculators cause a crisis in the country. They cause a lot of hardship, people lose their jobs. It's all because of the speculators. So people have different opinions, right? I think the key point is it's hard to know how bad is the situation in the country. Okay? But usually the speculators don't push the country into the crisis. Usually the country already has some kind of a crisis before the speculators uh, come in. Okay? So, <clears throat> here we see the story about the United Kingdom. In 1992, Britain was forced to withdraw. They didn't choose. Britain was forced to withdraw from the EMS, European Monetary System, after a speculative attack on the pound. Okay? German reunification, do you want Korean reunification? Yes. In 1990, resulted in very high interest rates. So you could have high interest rates if you join with North Korea, right? So the United Kingdom had to increase the interest rate, the same as Germany. Okay, Germany has high interest rates, UK has to have high interest rate too. <laughs> Fixed exchange rate, okay? But this was during a time of high unemployment in the UK. Is high interest rates good if we have an unemployment? No. Okay, people are not going to take loans. They're going to have less money at the end of the month. Okay? So, what happened? Speculators started saying that Britain is going to leave this peg to the German currency. 
Okay? What they knew they can see the economy has a problem. So they're betting that Britain will leave the one, right? So they sold sterling. So that was a lot of money. Soros was has billions of dollars. Other people's funds have billions and billions of dollars. So it's like it's really like an attack. They're selling billions of pounds. Okay? Uh, until the bank lost. The central bank no longer could pay the reserves or increase the interest rate. Britain increased the interest rate to 16 or 17 percent, okay? And then they gave up. They said, We're, we can't do it anymore, okay? So these have become more frequently because these days, globalization, you, you, can, you can attack a country if you want, okay? So, uh, we had other examples, Thailand, Malaysia, South Korea, Argentina, okay? Same situation, in Korea, the won went from $1, 1,001 to $1, 2,001. So the speculators made a lot of money, right? At the time, maybe Korea was trying to, using up its reserves to try and protect the won. But Nowadays, Korea has quite high foreign reserves. One of the reasons is because of the crisis in 1997. Uh, Korea wants to keep a high reserves nowadays. Okay. So, uh, do you have any question about this part? Is that clear? That destabilizing means like a crisis, an attack which can cause a crisis in our economy. Which one is more likely? <laughs> 